Hello everyone, welcome back to We Play. We're finally here with our first match of the day. Our original first match did get cancelled, so uh, unfortunately that happened. Bad things Ten happen sometimes to, uh, to good games, and apparently we're going to miss out on any MVP Five games whatsoever. Remaining. But we will have Fnatic versus Team Redemption. Fnatic, who I thanks to geez. MVP Phoenix forfeiting out, are Fnatic now the number one slot seven. and are guaranteed to be going to We Play. So congrats to them. They're going to be playing out some matches just to make sure that, uh, well, I guess they could keep their flawless run Next so far that they have in right replay, at. but also they uh, also Radiant can go ahead and make sure that uh, that maybe one of these teams can make it in the top four, or maybe one of them doesn't. We'll, we'll have to see. They have a, a match against Redemption, and I believe another match against, uh, I think it's Execration. Uh, I can't remember, but uh, that is... Only going to be the match versus Redemption today. We do have a draft, and I want to be able to introduce my co-caster, Heen, who's going to be joining me. Heen, uh, I know you've been casting a lot of SEA Dota with uh, Durka. Can remaining. you give me just a little bit of feelers about these two teams? Radiant team back. Well, first of all, I think Fnatic is on a hot streak right now. They got back from the majors with a strong showing, sixth place. Um, not very expected from most of the audience, considering mm -hmm. they're from the SEA region and. You know, over the last year, their performance hasn't—it's been okay, but remaining. not spectacular. But ever since they got back, uh, most of the games Five from them have been a stomp, remaining. impressive, like convincing stomps. So uh, today, not much different. I think Reserve the time. fan favorite right now is Fnatic to win the game, and it's kind of on. Uh, th there's some pressure on Redemption to put a stop to Fnatic stomping spree. Mm -hmm. um, that said. I noticed Redemption first picked Nature's Prophet and Fnatic almost immediately picked Beastmaster and uh, Batrider. It's like it kind of shows some confidence. They know exactly what they want to do against Nature's Prophet. And considering they're both often played as offlane heroes, I'm interested to see what like what kind of setup they have in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, uh, a little distracted because I am getting some very weird static voice thing from you. Ah, I mean, we tested everything out. You know, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm is it bad? No, no, no. I'm sure. Uh, no, no, no. It's actually something different entirely, but we'll, we'll see. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe it'll fix itself as time goes on. Either way. Um, yeah, Fnatic. Okay, so Radiant actually go with what you were talking about. Back. Fnatic was definitely a surprise to me. That they were able to play so well. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What was your feeling watching the majors? Because obviously, you and I haven't really talked about it. Did you? Did you think that Fnatic really stepped up uh, at the majors and, and really remaining. like outperformed their opponents, or do you think that was um, some of the Five weakness of remaining. the the Chinese teams? Fnatic did take on OG, which was really impressive. That was the match that Reserve surprised time. me the most. I think. I think. My honest opinion is that Fnatic, of course, played well, but mm -hmm. it wasn't all them. Uh, I felt like Ten a lot of their wins, you know, of course, they deserve it uh, because they played better. Fnatic's but um, it, it almost felt like Fnatic were playing their own game, and the the like the, a lot of the upsets, the losing team, kind of uh, they had weird drafts where they kind of played into Fnatic. Uh, usually, um, Ten seconds Fnatic remaining. before the majors wouldn't have been considered the favorites against most of the teams that they were matched against and it Fnatic's almost felt like it was the opposite pick. in the games where um, Radiant team the teams pick. expected to win were sort of losing confidence and they're making these questionable plays and decisions uh, but that said uh, I had my doubts about Fnatic's run um, in the majors but the games I've seen from replay of course the level of competition is not quite the same but nonetheless they're games have been pretty structured and I can tell that these guys, these guys know what they're doing. They they at least know what they want to do um, in the game, which is more than you can say for a lot of the teams. Good. I, I like that. I, I, I really like your honesty there because I kind of felt like the same thing. It was just, you know, it, it feels kind of like, you know, you want to be able to praise Fnatic, but you also don't want to take anything away from them. But um, I, I do agree complete with, completely with um, what you're saying. Let's talk about a draft, though, because we've got a Beastmaster, Batrider, and Wiss now Ten for Fnatic, remaining. while Team Redemption have run a pretty, uh, what I would say, stock standard, Five at least in my eyes, for remaining. this patch. Nature's Prophet, Invoker, and now a Sven. Picking up your three course Reserve right away time. can be a little bit questionable, but I think that um, it's still, you're picking up the three cores that are arguably the most popular from each position. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think one problem for Redemption right now is that their cores don't match up too well against uh, the first two picks from Fnatic. Mm -hmm. uh, the Beastmaster and Batrider was like an instant response to Nature's Prophet. They're obviously very good at uh, getting vision that you're not supposed to or like that are unique to these heroes. So that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Nature's Prophet. And they both conveniently have anti-BKB control against the Sven. So uh, I feel like there might be might be a lot of pressure on Invoker. I think it's Lance playing the mid. The last time I watched Redemption, DDZ was playing the offlane and Lance was playing mid. So uh, I'm not sure if they're going to stick to that. But uh, there might be a lot of pressure on Invoker to perform in. Mm -hmm. The IO, haven't seen too much Zeus. of IO from Fnatic. And we're Radiant team. seeing a Zeus pickup from Fnatic. So... I don't know where this draft is going, to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't know either. Do you think that, that they, they intended to pick up uh, Sven? The with sven I mean, combination, plus it's yeah. a natural carry versus uh, Furion? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it would have been a possibility. And, you know, Redem they were thinking, could, w will Redemption kind of, like, deny pick us just to, you know, deny us a combo? Um, that said, though... One of the Beastmaster or Batrider was likely going to be a support. Um, they could have like a mid Batrider and an offlane Beastmaster, but I got the feeling that they've been running a lot of greedy supports, basically. Um, yeah. DJ came back from his vacation and 343 was standing in. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe possibly like a jungle Beastmaster with an I'm not sure how they're going to pull that off in the early game, but it'll be interesting to see. And Redemption going for a more standard, you know. Uh, and he's just like well rounded for now. Yeah, the um the Wyvern's the the only hero that actually kinda stands out, but then again it I, I feel like it is a pretty good answer to most Wis combinations and uh it will be a, a nice counter initiator versus Batrider and, and Beastmaster, so um, as long as they, I mean, it's looking like as long as they're able to push this game late, Ten Team Redemption have this in the bag, unless Fnatic gets some, like, really late game carry here, but uh, I don't know what they could possibly remaining. get, because Fnatic were the ones who banned away the Spectre in the 3-4, and you can see Team Redemption banned away one of the the other, like, best late game carries out there, which was uh, Medusa. I think they were probably just, like, at a little bit of losses of uh, what could possibly be picked up. I remember seeing Fnatic run uh, a Medusa strat that was pretty interesting not so long ago, but um, I'm, I'm not sure if this would actually fit here. I do, I mean, I guess it's the only Wisp hero that's left that I'm somewhat okay with. I guess they just don't want to run Tiny Wisp at all, but uh, uh, it's going to be a Phantom Assassin Wisp combination. Yeah, it's really interesting because I sort of made a semi-complaint that Fnatic seems to only play Spectre and Medusa, and now that both the heroes are banned, we're <laughs> they're forced to pick something new. Yeah. And it's a PA, and it's completely new for me. Um, I guess one of the upsides of PA is she doesn't crit on her allies when she gets Winter's Cursed. Does she? I don't think she does. Uh, I don't think she does either. Yeah, generally you don't crit or bash on your allies. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty good against Sven. Like all these heroes on Redemption, awkward heroes to get MKB on. Um, Invoker just has way too many utility items that make it so that the opportunity cost on getting MKB is high. Uh, same for Sven, but not so much. But we'll have to see how the early game goes because that's going to decide everything. Yeah, it certainly is, especially for. Uh, I would say there's a bit more pressure on Fnatic to make this kind of lineup work but we'll see dj is going to be starting off tethering over to ohio who uh is going to try and lay down a uh, early ward not going for the boots first build but instead uh, the ring protection plus some extra regen the matchup you're facing up against the wyvern and sven i guess probably isn't going to be a very easy kill lineup so uh, i think ohio is planning on uh, a lot more longevity in this kind of lane yeah, for sure. I think he's more worried about, um, well, Winter Wyvern generally wants to get a fast level 6, so that he's going to spend a lot of time pulling creeps, but when he does get gone on, uh, like the boots aren't going to help too much against uh, Sven's stun, mm -hmm. so it's more about surviving that in initial burst, getting healed up, uh, possibly with the salve or uh, the wisp rotation. Right. 
It's an interesting ward uh, already laid out by the bounty hunter in our mid. Very unlikely to be countered by uh, Zeus, but still giving some vision in the mid lane. So mid one will have some eyes on him. Looks like they're going to try and contest for the bottom bounty rune, but Redemption got to go all in if they want to be able to save this one from disaster to start. And that's not going to be the case. Double bounty runes being picked up by Fnatic. That is really weird. Um, this is the third time I've seen Fnatic get both bounty runes and just we play. And with the heroes they have on Redemption, I felt like they could have better architected a way to ensure that the invoker gets the bounty room. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, they have Treants. Treants are ridiculous at level 1 fights. Mm -hmm. Well, they, you, you want to have a good start. For Fnatic, well, you definitely got it. They just managed to get both bounty runes. They also just countered the laning ward that was placed by uh, Redemption. So they're actually going to be running net as uh, harassing hero at bottom, sort of like a support Ohio? to try and make sure Ohio is okay, but he may not be okay as this sticky napalm is not actually protecting him. He's going to be body blocked up quite heavily, but it looks like those last couple of right clicks are not going to be enough. And unfortunately, that means Redemption will miss out on that first blood as Ohio is able to turn it around now with healing stuff. Ring of protection. Ring of protection, indeed. <laughs> Makes all the difference in the world. That bounty hunter's blocks were pretty good, but it just wasn't quite enough to secure the kill. Also, I thought it might be a Beastmaster jungle, but that would have been quite hard with the, you know, the, the DJ needs to farm on the Wisp as well. So it looks like a dual offlane, um, which was popular quite a few patches ago, when <laughs> you just pick two offlane heroes and you send them together and it's so much more pressure on the safe lane. Yeah. Spirit Breaker, Darkseer, Slardar, uh, Undying, or uh, Undying Tusk. Yeah. yeah, those were the... <laughs> there were like so many combinations. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it felt like it, it was like the same combo every time. It's just a difficult off, uh, safe lane. Mm -hmm. So Fnatic kind of bringing a little bit of that back with Net. I'm interested to see like how, like are they actually going to keep this here? Is he going to still pick up an Iron Talon at some point in time and try and do jungle at all? Or are they just content to do this completed dual lane? It's uh, definitely not something uh, either of us expected. Yeah, what would, what would be cool is if Net summons the boars to stack for Ohio. Uh, that mm -hmm. way, Batrider, who already leaves the lane uh, when he's played solo, can leave the lane. And meanwhile, Net, Net can get some good EXP. But he's not doing that for now. Um, playing more of a laning-oriented game. Yeah, feels kind of necessary when the Bounty Hunter was here, but Bounty Hunter isn't here anymore as he's actually going to be heading towards the, the mid lane now. There is a counter ward already laid out uh, early on by the Bounty Hunter. They probably, um, I didn't see it, but they probably took down one of the counter wards from Zeus. Yeah, they did. Uh, looks like Zeus is going to just walk back to the fountain, not bother with the runes. That's one thing that uh, Redemption have going for them is a really good rune control between the bounty owner and the nature's profit uh, teleport potential oh yeah absolutely We've got uh, pretty good control of the movement of this early game fanatic definitely a lot more static in their lane and that's probably going to continue for quite some time at least until maybe dj gets level six and then you can have your first kind of couple rotations but uh even then, Batrider's not going to be ready until he has Blink. Looks like they're going to start going on Ohio at this bottom lane, though. He will be able to get off the Firefly and gets over to a cliff area where he should be fine. Now it's a question of whether or not Net's going to be able to survive. As he was trying to help out his ally, they're going to have the Fury on TP and provide the extra help. But seriously, they're taking so much damage underneath this Firefly. They may have gotten the kill, but they're going to be losing oh. two, three, maybe even four heroes for all of this. As Nature Prophet is going to be run down as well. What an unbelievable start for Ohio as Redemption. They just put on the blinders and go for that kill, damning any of the costs. And the costs are quite heavy. Ohio is now level five. He's got a triple kill under his belt by four minutes. He's got bottle from, uh, that's actually his bottle. Yeah. DJ just brought in uh, a bottle for him. Ring of Bassy as well as Boots. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so bad for redemption. Anytime you get uh, like pretty much team wiped that four minutes. Oh, big one! He's turning around! Oh, man. 
Smart play, turning around and going for the Invoker, making the best out of a bad situation, but it's still going to cost them both their heroes in the mid lane, and that ends up in a double kill for the Bounty Hunter. He uh, barely managed to dodge the Sunstrike by turning around and just fighting the Invoker, which resulted in getting the kill, but still a good rotation from Redemption nonetheless. Over at bottom, now Lance is going to get bullied. He does have both Warcry and the stun. That's going to help him out, but it looks like he's still going to be chased down underneath the tower as the Wyvern is not here to be able to provide any saving grace. You know, like, the kills in, in themselves aren't that big of a deal, but the repercussions of, you know, what do these kill, kills mean um, right now, I feel like because of that uh, complete blunder by Redemption early on, giving Bat Rider so many levels and gold, this Sven... Um, a hero that's meant to just free farm and maximize his farm potential uh, until the mid game mm -hmm. is not gonna the, the heroes the you know the premise of the hero changes completely so I'm a bit worried for redemption because the laning stage has I mean the rules of the lan laning stage are kind of broken now they are keeping mid one down quite a bit as that was now the third attempted gank I think from the bounty hunter plus Furion combination onto mid one and they're successful for the second time so they're keeping him down but his bottom lane is turning pretty disastrous yeah i mean one one thing about mid one is from the games that i've casted of them and we play oh net it should there? result in an easy kill sunstrike actually doesn't hit so he's able to get off the axes and then they actually provide enough damage to get a couple of extra kills as they're going to be able to come in with the relocate go on to the winter wyvern who will be eventually burning to death here the only escapee is the Bounty Hunter who gets away, but again, not a worthy trade at this bottom lane for Redemption. I should have said, uh, it, it, was, it should have been an easy kill, but a costly kill for Redemption. I didn't realize the Wisp was so high level. He did a good job of, I seem to remember him running around often. He showed up at bottom, mid. I think uh, he collected probably at least two, maybe three of those kills um, in experience. Obviously, he didn't get the Bounty for... Um, for three of them, but I think he was there for like a lot of the experience on that weird yeah, bottom lane fight. Io is four and one. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Okay. And one of the things, oh mid one, he's always the one getting ganked like this. Poor mid. One. Yeah, he's just. But is this just his lot in life to bear on Fnatic? He just. It is. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I've like there was a game two days ago or three days ago where he started zero and four at four minutes or something. It was like just one of the worst games you could have as Zeus. And, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, he was got like, <laughs> like he, he's a mid-game, mid late-game oriented player. Mm -hmm. And I think Fnatic, as a team, understand the dynamic, like, uh, who needs the farm. And, like, it's always good that your mid-player gets a good start, but uh, they kind of trust that he'll bounce back uh, despite the bad early game and focus on the off-lane and... Uh, safe lane having a better game yeah and and uh, like a hero like zeus is kind of good for that exact position right it's not a hero that necessarily requires a whole lot of farm to still be able to output massive amounts of damage and team fights so as long as they don't draft him anything that's super hard carry wise and meanwhile batrider almost has that blink dagger just 300 gold away it's just very good timing because he's also level eight. So it's you'd rather just have higher levels and a pretty good blink dagger timing than just a good blink dagger. Lance is dead again. They do have the Zeus ultimate. Uh, looks like they were able to pick up double kills at top lane, but uh, let's see whether or not they can actually get the Winter Wyvern as well. Bounced over to the side, they will be able to chase down the Winter Wyvern, and that is almost a completed wipe. They have two heroes at the bottom lane, two heroes at top. The only surviving member of Redemption right now is DDC, who's calmly farming away in the mid lane, trying to get his Midas. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like these two teams are in different eras right now. Uh, Fnatic, laning stage is past them. They're just kind of playing as if it's the mid game. While Redemption, for them, they want to... Uh, they want the laning stage to continue, but Fnatic are saying, nope, I mean, it, it's ended. You guys lost the laning stage. Let's move on. Um, and Volker still, he just got that Midas. And, you know, Sven, I'm so worried for Sven. When is he going to have the time to farm up those ancient stacks that aren't even there and be the monster of a hero that he's become popular for? 
Yeah, this is definitely one of the more questionable starts to a, a Sven that I've ever seen. Does Do you think he still goes? Oh, bottom lane, they're going to relocate into the uh, Primal Roar. This is going to be a combination kill that you'll see time and time again in this game. Beastmaster setting up a relocate. It's kind of classic combination. Looks like they should be able to get the tier 1 tower as well. Radiance Meanwhile, in mid lane, is Bounty Hunter going to attempt something here? The Invoker is coming across, but they actually see the Bounty Hunter. Are going to be able to pull him back with the lasso. They manage to finish him off. Mid one, he's trying to get away. Will be able to stay ahead of that Sunstrike, it looks like. The Furion ult bounces around. It does some damage to him, but it's still not quite enough. Ohio's actually diving in for more. He's going to be able to catch the Winter Wyvern, it looks like. As, oh no! Not quite enough damage. 40 HP, all that was left on the Furion, but he does manage to get away. Still, though, again, a free kill for Fnatic as they control the runes this time. Yeah, that was a nice anticipation, anticipation dust by Ohio. But we haven't even seen the full potential of Fnatic's lineup, I feel. This is only the beginning of the mid-game, uh, mostly due to how the lanes panned out. The mid-game kind of started fast, but... Uh, just notice all the crazy vision potential they have on Fnatic. They have Zeus, they have Beastmaster and Batrider, mm -hmm. and they have the Relocate. So if this game goes even more one-sided than this, uh, then I, Redemption, how are they ever going to leave their base, um, take advantage of Nature's Prophet's mobility around the map? Yeah, it's something to be said, even though they are like the three most popular core heroes um, in the patch right now, they do all need an individual amount of farm, and they're not like the kind of heroes such as the Batrider who's going to just be looking for fights like all day, every day. Furion's going to be off on his own, Sven wants to be able to do you know the stacking and, and farming that we were talking about, but it still isn't anywhere close to. And obviously Invoker always goes for that Hannah Midas Drums build, and it's kind of slow. So this offers so many opportunities for Fnatic with their wanton amount of vision just to be able to pick these heroes off time and time again. Yeah, it's... I mean, Nature's Prophet, by the way, is going for the Midas, it seems. He's saving up that gold on top of the Gloves of Haste. So it kind of reminds me of the game that Fnatic played against Mineski. Mineski chose to uh, draft Sven two times, uh, both the times that they played them. Mm -hmm. And Sven basically, he was torn between farming and fighting for the team because Sven is he's one of the few carries that can initiate for the team and they desperately needed someone to be in the front line um, you know, controlling the Fnatic heroes. And Lance... And Lance is going to be picked off while trying to do those Ancients. Beastmaster has been sitting on the side here. Finally going to pop his head out. We'll go for the Primal Roar onto DDZ, which they'll quickly follow up with a relocate once again. Trying to chase down the Bounty Hunter towards the tail end. Mid one's going to be able to pick that one up with the ultimate. Nice ulti there. Winter's Curse laid down by the Winter Wyvern. Will be able to kill the Wisp, but it doesn't really matter as he trades away his own life for that. And in the end, a 1 for 4 exchange, which Fnatic will also claim probably the middle tier 1 tower for. Yeah, did they get a... No, they didn't get a track kill on the <laughs> Wisp. I mean, <laughs> one of the things that they can do is, you know, is play defensively, obviously. But you can't just uh, be like YOLO and um, get frustrated and make plays that are uh, not going to result well um, just because you're frustrated. You know, they can bait Fnatic in somehow and try to get as many tracks as possible. Uh, I mean... Use the aggression on Fnatic against them. That's all I can say about them uh, for Redemption right now. Right. Otherwise, this game is just by the nature of Fnatic's draft. It's going to get extremely hard because uh, once this mid-tier one falls for Redemption, they're they have no control um, about going into their jungle, farming lanes, past their tier two, uh, contesting Roche. These things are going to get exponentially harder. I don't think yeah, I've ever seen a, a Sven farm ancients without his helmet dominator yet. But yeah, this is like a Sven on a good game has two more items. He has like a Sanjin Yasha and a Blink Dagger. Yeah. He should essentially be it, uh, probably a little bit uh, around where Mushi is, despite Mushi being yeah. over completely over inflated with uh, a Midas and 
a 3-0 and 4 score. So that's just kind of like where this event goes. Yeah, you mentioned that these three cores on Redemption are possibly, you know, some of the most popular heroes for the responding roles, but uh, when you're losing like this, the problem becomes that the jungle... Oh, Prophet couldn't even catch him. The jungle becomes way too crowded. Uh, these heroes, Nature's Prophet, Invoker, uh, Sven, they need to be, you know, they need at least two core items um, to do stuff. Oh, they have the track. Um, DJ. Oh, they. Oh, I just. I can believe this deck is relocate to bottom, but yeah, they do get that kill. And it's a track kill. Hey. Redemption, a little something going right for them. Uh, they need a lot to go right for them. As right now, they're probably behind by soon to be 10,000 gold and over 10,000 experience. I'm sure Roshan is likely to be a target soon. Fnatic can probably go for it now while the tier 1 tower is taken at the top lane. There's no reason to contest that, so they can go for a separate objective if they want. I wonder if they're going to give up the tier 2, though, for Roche. Because earlier mid one, as the Zeus was TP into the top tier one, and then cancelled. Probably the team made a call saying it's not worth it. Uh, let's just go for Roche. Right. But giving this tier two on top of it, it might. Uh, oh, giving Roche is bad, but if you're this far behind, I I'd say Redemption would be pretty happy with getting two towers um, without having to confront the much more far fanatic heroes. Alright, since we don't see very much PA, do you think this is the do you think this is the build for a Phantom Assassin? As oh, yep, Winter Wyvern's not making it out. The S and Y and drums, just like a lot of early stats. Uh I like it for this game because he he does have the IO and if I mean let's lay out some options on PA. Uh you can go Battle Fury first mm -hmm. or you can go. Some people tend to go basher first because, uh, like, not super fast basher, but generally pretty. Like, you get a bracer or drums and then basher for the, what do you call it? The bash on the your daggers. But mm. this build I like because they have the IO, and a lot of people sometimes when you have healing on your team and sustain, they think it's okay to not have that much uh, HP pool, but. I think with this much HP people, will she if he's on strength threads? Oh. Trying to oh, jump onto Nature's Prophet. This isn't going to work out as there is a Winter Wyvern to be able to provide the turnaround. And Furiana will be able to just TP out. But I can see what you're saying, right? That, that yeah. if you have this wealth of stats, you can make sure that you don't get popped and that, that healing, that sustain always comes into play. Yeah, and the movement speed, and added to the fact that I think the most important thing is that he doesn't have to be the damage dealer on this team. Yeah. Going to He's going to be pulled back to his doom. Mushi's already jumping on a DZZ who does get bounced back. They have vision of him. They can keep on going. Mushi's going to be able to crit him to death. Now an extra kill on the side. Mid one does get his great comeback though. A triple kill for him in this mid fight. As uh, He's back in business now with an ether lens. Blink dagger and another 1400 gold. All those deaths in the mid lane have been completely forgotten. Yeah, what a massacre. Uh, just looking at this Radiance past brief team fight, um, go, like, continuing my point, I think PA's role is not to carry his team. Uh, it'll, if it comes to that, he will, but for now, it's like he has. He's actually the tankiest guy on the team, despite being, you know, the stereotype of PA that he's quite squishy, doesn't have that much um, hit points mm -hmm. in survivability. But he's going to be that guy who uh, Zeus is going to provide the vision. He's going to do a bunch of damage to everyone, even. Uh, and then PA is going to clean up or force Sven, for example, or uh, the rest of the heroes on Redemption to use important spells on him. But he has the Aegis spend. He's backed up by Wisp. So it's like, well, I mean, what do you do? There's not many options for Redemption at this point. It seems like the best course of action is probably dodging fights and... Uh trying to wait out the Aegis, but the Fnatic yeah, will just probably just take all these objectives. Uh, Redemption smoke right under the Fnatic ward, so... Dear. Fnatic, they have an option to actually, you know, they completely are well aware that they smoked, and they can bait this, because they have relocation. Yep, they're actually going to jump yep. and immediately grab it in the Winter Wyvern, and the rest of Fnatic 
coming in with uh, the relocate, but Redemption have already backed themselves away. They're actually going to go for the top lane where Net is going to be a potential casualty here. Can't do anything as he's being cold snapped to death. Will end up going down. But at the same time, they got to get back to bottom lane nice and fast because Mushi is pushing it in. Pre 20 minute racks. Oh, this is going to be rough. But you can tell uh, based on that, you know. Redemption are the ones who five man smoke and two people, Bat Rider and Zeus, initiated a fight onto Redemption, knowing that they were smoked. That that's the that basically sums up the state of this game, how confident they are. Oh, the Zeus ultimately gonna be able to finish off that Wyvern bounty hunter who's trying to get as many tracks out as possible. Doesn't really matter though if you can't get any kills, as DDZ is also gonna be falling. And the four man crew of Fnatic will take this lane of racks by 20 minutes, and there is the GG call. So, DDZ knows that uh, the end is very much nigh, and he's gonna call it early. Fnatic has been on a very dominant run so far in We Play, and will continue that flawless run now. Yeah, I didn't really have too many problems with Redemption's lineup. I just felt like it could have been a lot different game if. I mean, there were a lot of blunders early on. They failed to secure a bounty room. Um, unless there's something going on that shouldn't happen. You either you're getting first blood somewhere else, so they, no heroes can go to the room, and then the laning stuff. Like four people got killed at four minutes.